Tekbir. 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 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa afdalu salati wa atabu tasbihi ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahum tabarak wa ta'ala mention the Qur'an and write this. Surah number 3, verse 164. Thank you, sir. This verse, I want it, inshallah, to be a theme throughout this conference for all of us. That hopefully, by the time we leave this conference, this gathering, this summit, that all of us have memorized this verse. In Arabic, English, the meaning we really want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in that verse, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْضَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنْفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْهِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَاهُ الْمُبِينَ In this verse, Allah said that Allah certainly favored, endowed a blessing on the believers when he sent among them a messenger, Sayyiduna wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from among them. And there is something that our teachers, when they mention the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the form of praise, they said, huwa basharun la kal basharun. He was, and he is, a human being, but not like other human beings. He is an insan kami. He is the perfected human being, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that is a blessing that Allah gave us the best example of a human being that ever walked the face of the earth and came into existence. We say about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayru qalqillah, the best of the creation of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And Allah described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like that. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلِقٍ عَظِيمٍ That you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have the highest moral standard. When our teachers were explaining that verse, they said, not only does he have a high, lofty character, it is above all akhlaq of law. It is above every form of character. Morality, that of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we should take that as a blessing, that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to us and we're from his ummah. It is the best nation. You are the best nation brought forth from the human race. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He teaches them, he recites to them his signs yet to do alayhim ayatihim He recites his signs The ulama when they explain ayatillah the signs of Allah they said they are the signs that are written and they are the signs that are observed. The signs that are written are Quran and Kareem, which all of us should have our portion. And when I say having our portion of the Quran, it's not just reading the Quran. It's looking at the Quran. It's reciting the Quran. It's listening to the Quran. It's touching the Qur'an, it's walking to the Qur'an, and it's feeling the Qur'an till we reach the point where we taste and experience the Qur'an. Our teachers say, I don't want you to practice the religion, I want you to taste the religion. 
from the Quran, we should get a sense of milk, a sense of real experience and tasting. To when we would recite the Quran, we realize that this is the medicine for our souls and the instruction for our life. And then when we observe the cosmos, we see everything that points to Allah. As the scholar said, how can one be a denier when everything in existence points to the fact that he is one? Everything in existence. Those are signs we should observe. And then he said, well, you said he, him. And this is the shadow. This is the point and the evidence in this verse that I want to highlight. Well, you said he, him. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not only recited, but he came to purify us. What is purification? Especially when we realize what purification is, we should pay close attention just to those words. When you say kihim, it is, as Imam Dawood mentioned, two aspects: at takliya, what tahiyya. It is divesting what as sifatu madhmuma, brain-worthy characteristics, getting rid of that, and. We know we have some characteristics that we need to get rid of. No matter how much knowledge we got, we still can be Negroes. We understand that. So knowledge alone is not enough. There is something else that must take place. It is the divesting, getting rid of those things. But not only that, there's another side of it. Once you get rid of something, it's empty now. And it's suitable to be filled with a sifat al praiseworthy characteristics. But if you don't get rid of the stuff, you can't put nothing in the dirty glass that's going to be beneficial. You're going to get sick. So if we have to solve in name without a way, it's pouring pure water in a dirty glass. And what's going to happen when that occurs? If you drink it, even though it's pure water, once it came in contact with that dirty glass, you're exposing yourself to sickness. So that is first, get rid of it. Then, how do we do that? And he teaches them the book, Al Quran, and it is a healing for every illness. Well, Hikmah. The wisdom, which is the sunnah. You know what you know by the term hikmah, wisdom? It is putting everything in its proper place. That is what the sunnah of the Prophet does for us. It puts everything in its proper place. And then it describes us perfectly. But before all of this, we were in a state of manifest misguidance. Look at our lives. Allah is telling you the Quran, don't forget your history. If you forget where you came from, you will never appreciate where you're at. Never forget it. It is a wisdom in that. That's why he explained in the verse the favor and told you how you got the favor, then remind you where you came from. Don't forget it. And in this summit, we're going to be reminded of where we've been, where we're presently at, and where we must go. Barakallahu feekum, inshallah. Bismillah. It's an it's a honor and a pleasure to be among the imams of the round table. This, inshallah, will be the highlight for me of these nights, or these days. And uh, Sheikh Amin mentioned something in this verse, or he mentioned this verse. Uh, and there's a point I would like to look at in this verse. Allah said, لَقَدْ مَنْ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Surely Allah has favored the believers. 
right? The people of Iman. Iman is what? Believing in everything that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought. Ibba'atha fihim, that when he sent among them, Rasulam min anfusihim, the messenger from themselves. So here, Allah ascribed all believers to the messenger. Right? All of y'all, to the extent that you're a believer, are from the family of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And that comes in hadith, Alu Muhammad kullu taqi. The family of Muhammad is every taqi. Right? Anyone with taqwa, you're from the family of Muhammad. And another sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if we can draw from this verse, inshallah, that'll be our theme. Um, inshallah, you know, they used to call us this, and they thought it was like an insult or Muslims that weren't, maybe had enough love, try to remove the title they used to call, say Muhammadans. If someone called me a Muhammadan, I would consider that the greatest compliment. And Muhammadiyun, right? Those that have a relationship, a connection, a genealogy spiritually to a Nabi Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and something, you know, one of the things that was drawn out of, uh, that I drew out of the talk of um, Rasul, Habib or Rasul Miller, Allah ya uh, was that, you know, our Islamic movements, part of it was trying to uh, proper, healthily define our uh, an identity for we a people who many connections to our original identity were, dis were severed. You know, so people say, I'm Arab, or I'm Morisai, I'm Moorish, or I'm this, or I'm that. But understand, this to Sawwuf, and again, we don't have to use the name. And they also say, Rasmuhum Mahu al Rasul. Their formality is the erasure of formalities. And we, we want Imam Suleiman to be right there. You know, a formality that suits. A student of a man we hold in very high regard, Imam Wardin Muhammad Rahimahullah. But we just want to have a reality that's Muhammad. Right? That we, um, you know, searching for identity to the degree that we embody the meanings of the revelation that he brought us. Where is he? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And to the, to the degree that with acknowledgement of Allah's favor, not in pride, but an acknowledgement of Allah's favor, who can look down on that? Anyone who looks down on someone who's related to Prophet Muhammad so like someone's a fool. Right? Anyone who claims supremacy over them, that person is a fool. Right? But understand that you all have a connection to a Habib so like someone. And inshallah, drawing from this verse and following Imam Amin, may Allah give us to, uh, to really realize that connection. Not just hold it in some dicker beads or a turban or whatever, or a sandal of the Prophet Sallallahu but it, that it be in our hearts. Our hearts have a legitimate relationship to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And that's not to deny the physical genealogy. None of us can, I, can deny that we're African American. You know, or those of us, or brothers that are South Asian or whatever. No one denies that. Legally in the Sharia, we couldn't make claims to any other genealogy than ours, and it can even be kufr to deny genealogy. But spiritually, we're all aspiring to a genealogy to Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Salman al Pharisee, which is interesting. No one denied the Persian identity of Salman. He remained al Pharisee. But he's from Ahlul Bayt. Salman Minna, Ahlul Bayt, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ahlul Bayt, the Fatah. Right? So, inshallah ta'ala, no one can deny Imam Suleiman Muhammad. It's from the students of Imam Wadi Muhammad. Suleiman Hamid. But inshallah, he'll be Suleiman Minna, Ahlul Bayt. Imam Amin Minna, Ahlul Bayt. May Allah bring us that. He said I could be totally explicit. The first time I sat with Habib Omar, I said, Habib Omar, I want from Al-Ba'alawi what Salman had from Habib Salman. 
Right? May Allah give us that. We should be greedy from Allah. You don't be greedy to the creation. But be greedy from Allah. Allah, give us what, what you gave Salman. Amen. Give our people what you gave Salman. Salman minna ahlul bayt. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Amen. 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 Just very briefly, um, and listening to the comments of our teachers, may Allah preserve them all, and preserve their families and bless them. It's something that jogged in my mind, particularly what I heard Sheikh Amin talk about. And I, I want all of us to think about this as we wrap this up, talking about black uh, uh, spirituality amongst African American Muslims, black folks. We know that the Prophet was sent for all humankind. Isn't that right? He was sent for all of humankind. He's sufficient for all humankind. Right? So we know this. And he was sent to be a mercy for the entire universe. So we know this. And then amongst his Sahaba, we also know from the traditions that different companions, he would give different specific advice to different companions. So with general teachings and general advice for the entire ummah, but because he knew the states of his Sahaba, he would sometimes give specific advice and maybe advise one Sahabi in one particular way and then advise another Sahabi who came in for advice in another way, very specifically. So he knew his Sahaba, and he basically knew their spiritual case history. Now I'm saying this as a point. Generally speaking, right, we are all aiming for one thing, and that is the result of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has been one. Right? That's what we're all striving for his pleasure and felicity with us in this life, which leads to eternal happiness and joy being in his divine presence in the hereafter. That's our ultimate aim. Now, as part of the human condition, we all suffer from different things and different things we have to deal with, in general, as human beings. However, certain groups of people may be struggling with certain things more than other groups of people, based upon what we could call their psychosocial history, what's influenced them, what societies they live in, what they're bombarded with. So like, if you go to a medical doctor, I went for a checkup not long ago. When the doctor gives you an examination, they want to know your case history, ain't that right? They want to know, not just you, does anyone in your family have hypertension? Does your mama or daddy, your grandparents, they have hypertension? Anyone have diabetes, history of heart problems, prostate cancer? They ask these questions because they want to know more about your history, your family history, and your medical history that they may be able to give you a proper diagnosis or a course to better physical wellness. Ain't that right? We have a case history as black folks who were enslaved here in America. Some people, like I mentioned of the spiritual diseases that Sheikh uh, Sultan Muhammad bin Ali mentioned, such as some people having al-iftikhar, racial pride, or in their lineage, thinking themselves as better than others because of that. Our goal is to not to do the opposite. Our goal is to seek the wasas, the middle ground, the wasatiyah. We don't want to go too far to the extreme to the right or to the left. So for us, for instance, as other people may suffer from a level of too much to also based upon race, for us sometimes we don't even stick together and support each other enough. And this is related to spiritual disease and reality. Now, we can't over-medicate. Just like physically speaking, you have a disease or a problem. If you take too much
much medicine or take the wrong medicine, you would have toxic shock that's gonna make you sick. So the nation of Islam, for instance, was a type of medicine, but it was an overcorrection. It was a medicine and too much medicine, because then the black man was God and all white people inherently shall be, which we know this is not Quranically correct. But the Allah Latif, but the Nasaleha. Right, we know this is incorrect to say this type of thing, right? No group of people are inherently, as a race, evil or devils because of their loan or their skin color. Ain't that right? Overcorrection. So we have certain things that we have to deal with inside of our community. And as there are general problems that we deal with, part of our challenge is to look at our social situation. Look how we operate as a community and then look at our problems so that we can administer the proper remedy for our particular circumstance. And there's nothing racist about it. There's nothing racist about it, of, of, of this analysis, right? Um, or uh, being uh, exceptional, right? So this is just something for us to consider when we're talking about the issues that we need to challenge that we're gonna be talking about in the next couple of days about how to bring our hearts together, not for the sake of racial identity, but to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. Because he's the ultimate objective, right? Ilahi ente maksudi wa ridaka maqlubi. Right? My God, you are my ultimate aim. And your felicity is what I crave, is what I strive for, right? So how can we talk about these things and benefit from our teachers in the next two days that we can try to go back to our locality, talk to our leadership, to, to spiritually deal with the underlying issues that, um, that face our community? And I was in with this too, because we need to eat. Imam Wafdi Muhammad Rahmatullahi Ta'ali. He said something one time I heard him say that really stuck in my mind. He said that it's no accident in the language of the Quran that the same word in Arabic for see is related to the same word as love. They come from the same root. So the seed in the particular soil produces the tree that's going to bear the fruit. There's good fruit and there's bad fruit. There's a good tree and there's bad tree, right? So we're going back to what our Sheikh said, Abdul Karim Yahya Habibullah Ta'ala, about the South being a love movement. But we can talk about all sorts of financial strategies to get more money as a community. And we need to do this, and we need to challenge what the police are doing, or this, or whatever specific issue we want to dream about, or talk about a solution. If we don't have a love, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a deep love for his messengers, a love for the salihin and the awliya, and a love for each other instead of looking down at each other or having the soul run for each other or looking at each other being inferior and other people superior, then we're not going to get the fruit that we need, that we want, that we're looking for. Not without mahabba, not without hope. The habba for us, is mahabba. And with that, I close. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashadu in la ila la anna sabukiruka wa natubu ilayk. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa ina ala bin nar. Rabbana la tizuq qudubana fa'ati il hadaytana wa habana min ladunka rahma inna ka anta al-wahhab. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa al-Asr bil inna al-insalana fi khusr. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصلوا بالحق وتواصلوا بالصبر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم